Hey, what's up guys and gals? Sanitary 103. Thanks for watching yet another video. So in a, today's video, I wanted to talk about the show and it's on TLC. I don't know if you've seen it. If you haven't, um, you could go on YouTube and type in um, my 600 pound story. And basically uh, TLC is pretty known for having some really um, extreme, I guess you can say. They definitely want ratings, but there are some really uh, informative uh, shows. And I just wanted to give you my uh, perspective, my thoughts on this show. And the last episode that I saw, it was this one uh, lady um, named uh, Pauline, I believe. And she weighed in excess of 600 pounds. I think she was about 670 pounds and whatnot. And basically this show is a true story. It's a documentary type style. And they basically follow this person for up to a year. And what they do is they go into a consultation to a, a doctor in um, Houston, Texas. I forgot his name, but he's pretty well-renowned. And he specializes in extremely obese patients. If patients qualify for gastric bypass surgery and skin removal surgery, he will approve it. So this lady, she was really, really big. I forgot which state she was from. I think she was in, from Texas, I'm not sure, but she drove down to live in Houston where the facility is at just so it could be easier because she basically cannot maneuver. I mean, these people, if you've seen it, it when you exceed, you know, this is not your 300 pound, your 400 pound. This is morbidly obese where your health is a concern. Your, your heart is a ticking time bomb. Your health is a ticking time bomb. So this lady finally goes and meets the doctor in Houston and they do a consultation. And he basically asks her, what have you been eating? And she admits that she just can't stop eating. It doesn't matter if she's full. So the number one step the doctor does is before he even approves a gastric bypass surgery. And real quick, for people that don't know what gastric bypass surgery is. Now, I'm no expert, but just the main gist of it. Basically, what they do is they shrink your stomach to the point where you can only eat a small portion at a time. Now, this is going to help you lose weight pretty rapidly because obviously you can't consume that much food at one sitting. However, this doesn't mean you're in the clear. It's not like you can just not change the mindset, do gastric bypass surgery and lose weight and be like, oh, I'm good. It's not a magic pill. It's not a magic formula. Why is that? Because with gastric bypass, even though you can't eat a large quantity at a time, you can still slowly eat a little bit, eat a little bit, eat a little bit every 30, you know, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour. And there's been people that have still gained weight and your stomach, even though it's small, it can start expanding a little bit from what I understand. So there's people that have had gastric bypass surgery and didn't change their mindset and they got sloppy with their diet and they gained the weight back. Real quick, backtracking with the story, the uh, doctor always recommends the patient to try to lose. And for this lady, it was like 40 pounds in a month or two. He basically wants to see if the patient is willing to change her mindset and show some progress before he approves the gastric bypass surgery. So fast forward, she's like, okay, I'm gonna do it. She goes home, um, she lives with her son, and it's really, really sad because her son, basically his full-time job is taking care of her. Full-time caretaker. I don't know if he has a job, I'm not sure, but he just has to bathe her, gets her whatever um, she wants, and he enables her too. That's what this show also um, shows is that a lot of these people uh, the families are enablers. They basically, she's getting the food from somewhere, right? She, uh, she goes with the son and the son buys her all this fast food, whatever she wants, ice cream, cookies, and all that stuff. So after the consultation, she goes home and she tries to uh, lose a little bit of weight. The doctor tells her to go really, really low carb, 800 calorie diet or something, high protein, low carb, take out all the starches, um, sodas, all that junk food, and then come back in two months. Okay, so they show her eating, you know, she's kind of cheating a little bit here and there. Two months later, she goes back to the doctor. They do a weigh-in to see if there's any progress to see if they can approve the gastric bypass surgery. She steps on the scale, and I don't have the numbers exactly uh, in my head, but I think she lost six pounds only. And she was expected to lose 30 or 35 pounds. And the doctor asks her, what's up? And the doctor has to deal with this all the time, and she didn't admit anything. She's like, oh, I lost six pounds. That's great. Yeah, six pounds is, is a start, but at her condition, she doesn't have time to be messing around. She needs to 
follow the diet, lose the weight fairly rapidly on her diet so she can get the gastric bypass. And from there, hopefully the next step would be skin removal surgery. So what did the doctor do? Well, in my opinion, I think he should have just rejected her and said, you know what, you, you, I'll give you one more month chance and you better lose weight. If not, you're out of here. But I don't know what the whole stipulations of the show. He said that she's a very extreme case. So he put her in the hospital. So in the hospital, they force her on an 800 calorie diet. And what happens in a month or two, voila, she drops to 500 and something. She loses like 145 pounds. After that, she's in the hospital. She has her uh, gastric bypass surgery. It's successful. And then usually within a day or two after recovery, they go home. And she was there for like five days, three extra days. And the doctor says, what are you doing? You need to be walking now. You got to rehabilitate, do some physical therapy. And she's like, I don't feel good. And she starts just making excuses again. I mean, I've seen this show um, a lot of times. I've seen a lot of cases. And she's just constantly making excuses. And the doctor straight up tells her, if you don't start walking after the surgery, there's an increased chance that you're going to get a blood clot. And she's just like, well, I don't care. Well, she didn't say I don't care, but that's pretty much what she was saying indirectly. Like, I don't feel good. My, uh, my, my tummy doesn't feel good. You know, this and that. And the doctor's just like, you, you got to do it. And she's trying to do it on her terms. So he ends up getting this like vacuum uh, weird procedure where to prevent the blood clot from going into the lungs or something. And he has to perform that procedure. And then he does that. And it doesn't even seem like she's really grateful. And after five days, she finally goes home and then he checks up on her every few months. So on the documentary, it goes like month three, month four. And then it kind of shows a summary of if she's lost. And every month, she stays the same from when she uh, you know, lost the weight from the uh, gastric bypass. So on her own, she didn't really lose anything. And so she stayed at like 540 for the entire year, the entire year. And this actually got me really, really angry. Now, first and foremost, this may come off as judgmental, but I saw this show many, many a times. And there are some really, really great stories, really inspirational. The majority of them that they show are very inspirational. These people have um, lost a lot of weight. There's a lot of successful stories where these people, they got the gastric bypass, they exercised, they watched their portions, and then they got skin removal surgery in some cases, and they got down to like 200 something and, and they were really, really healthy and happy. But this scenario, the doctor was basically saying, after an entire year, he's like, there's nothing much more I can do. It's a lost cause. And she's like, well, I can do it on my own anyway. So her and her son, which is the enabler, um, she just kept eating. And after a year, she stayed at the five something. And to this day, we don't know what's going to happen. The doctor said that she's she may li live to another year. And I just want to share this story with you guys and gals. If you haven't seen the episode, that this is some real stuff. This is like a person that even though they're at the other end of the spectrum in terms of health they're deteriorating you gotta still want it for yourself it doesn't matter you know they she had the golden opportunity i don't know who was paying for it tlc was paying for it taxpayer money but she had all these all the staff she had a uh, physical therapy sessions that were scheduled and she didn't go to them and the doctor called her out on it and she, he said why aren't you going she's like oh i didn't i didn't think they called they didn't call me he calls the physical therapy office. They're like, yeah, we called three times and she said she doesn't want to do it. She wants to do it on her terms. She wants to walk a little bit on her terms. It's just one excuse after another. And despite being close to dying, which I, of course, I don't want her to die, but it, you know, this is just a, not a good situation. So although this is a very extreme situation, you got to want to change for yourself. You, you can have all the tools all the support. You could have a world renowned, a doctor such as that guy. You could have family, friends, everything. Okay. But if you don't want to do it for yourself, it's just not going to happen. And another quick point I wanted to make in this video is that a lot of these people that are extremely overweight, they've had some traumatic experiences growing up. This lady, um, I don't remember all the details, but she grew up really, really poor. And when she was young, she was actually really, really skinny. And I think her parents divorced, I'm not quite sure, but food was very scarce when she was young. And I think after that, once she was able to get food, 
it was kind of like a feast or famine mode and she just started packing all the weight she was using it as comfort other stories they do use food as comfort a lot of these people come from abusive uh, backgrounds whether it's their father you know beating them or if they're teased um, as a child and they use food as comfort so I'm not being judgmental at all in, in that terms because I haven't had to deal with something like that but there comes a point in life where you got to take responsibility you got to let the past go and get help go see a psychologist or a psychiatrist get it get it right up here because even though the physical part is going to be grueling it's the mental part that you got to change so that's about it for this video and if you are watching this video and you happen maybe you're not morbidly obese or if you are or just a little bit overweight and you feel like you're losing hope it's never never too late you got to really want it though if you really want it you do your own research get your friends and family support if possible leave the past as it is it'll make you stronger then definitely you can still reach your goals thanks once again for watching this video comments or questions are always welcome and i'll see you guys next time bye by 8 45 i told my coworker, i was like i gotta go home I, I don't feel good i feel really nauseous my head feels funny uh, i don't know if it's food poisoning i got a stomach bug whatever